All right. Hello, everybody. So last week, we saw the interior walls get framed up with the metal studs. And this week, we're going to see um, all the different things they put inside of those walls before they go ahead and finish them with drywall. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see some pictures from this week. So, if you remember, last week, this is kind of where we left off. Um, remember, the walls had, um, had the metal studs inside. And this week, we had the plumbers come by. First of all, I wanted to show you, um, after they put the metal studs, they did a couple things with wood. So Richard, who you guys met last week, um, he went ahead and he made some different arches in the walls out of wood because you can't make the arches out of the metal. So he went ahead and made some arches. You can see how he does that. And then they also added wood blocking anywhere where something was going to be hung on the wall. So this is where you would hang your TV. You'd mount your TV on the wall. So they put a big piece of wood here so you can um, mount a TV. You can see this is um, a kitchen wall. So there's going to be tons of kitchen cabinets. So they put wood here so that way they'll be able to um, screw the cabinets to the wall also. The next thing is the plumbers came back and they went ahead and stubbed up the plumbing that was out of the ground and they went ahead and put them in the walls and stubbed them out. So if you remember the last time the plumbers were here, they, um, they were actually digging holes and you remember they put all the plumbing up through the dirt so that way they'd be sticking up when the concrete was poured. Well, now it's time for them to come back. The walls are up. And uh, it's time for them to come back. And they went ahead and they took the little stubs that were in the sticking up from the concrete and they went ahead and put them up through the walls and had them sticking out. So that way, when it's time for a sink to be installed, they could connect the sinks and different um, other fixtures. And I'll show you how they. Um, yeah. We actually give them a plan. You can see here, and it has dimensions on it to everywhere where there's going to be a sink, a faucet, a washing machine, refrigerator, a bathtub, anything that might need access to water is dimensioned on this plan. So they look here and they measure to make sure they get it in the right spot. So that way when the cabinets are installed and the sinks are installed, it all fits together. Wait a minute, Lori. So, so whoever makes that plan has to make sure it's, it's easily read so somebody else can read it and, and make whatever is on that plan, correct? Exactly. So you can so see, see here, a you can see here there's um, a toilet and then this is a cabinet and this is a sink. Now there's a dimension here, five foot one and a quarter inches to the center of this sink where the pipe needs to be. They also have over here a little note that says from this wall for one foot and one and a half inches don't put any pipes because this is where there's going to be drawers. So you don't want there to be drawers, you don't want there to be pipes where there's going to be drawers. They also have a note not to center the pipe, so they have a lot of different notes on here to make sure um, that the plumbers know what to do. With that plan, there's a lot of geometry in that plan. You just yeah. finish lines and angles and um, uh, see how accurate everything is. So now I'm going to point out to you a couple of different things um, that they did, that the plumbers did. So you can see here they have the pipe now coming out of the wall so that way once the wall is covered up they can still access. And if you guys remember when we went over the plumbing before, this is, here is going to be a sink in a bathroom. You've got hot water, That's cold sick. water, these tiny um, pipes, these are for fresh hot and cold water and then this big pipe here is for the sewer. So this is where the dirty water flows out of, okay? 
So there's three pipes in that one pipe? Yeah, there's three pipes, and I'll show you some more pictures. Um, so that's how the water goes in and out. This is going to be the kitchen sink here. Um, you can see you've got hot water, cold water, and this is for um, the dirty water to flow out of the sink and into the sewer. Now you'll notice that the pipes, they not only come out of the ground, and then they're stubbed out for where the sink's going to be, but they also go all the way up to the ceiling. Okay? Now the reason why the pipes, they pipe them from the ground all the way through the ceiling, and then what happens next is um, they actually go through the roof, is because when you, the, when you um, use a sink, the pipe is filled with air. And when you turn the water on and the dirty water goes down this thick pipe, the air needs some place to go. So instead of the air getting pushed down and causing maybe some bubbles or some blockage, they pipe this sewer pipe all the way to the roof so that way the air can go up and the water can go down. Here you can see they pipe it all the way. This is, pipe is now in the ceiling right now, and this is for air to go when the water is on and going down the drain. And you can see how the pipes connect in the ceiling, and then they're going to go up through the roof. Here you can see it went up through the roof. And the plumbers, they have all these different pipes and different sizes and attachments to attach them together. They look at the plans and see what they need, and they work them out. Now you also see we've got these metal plates here that protect the pipe from when they put the drywall on later to make sure they don't, you don't want any nails going through the, and breaking these pipes. So they put these metal plates anywhere where in the future people might be nailing or screwing things into the walls to make sure that if you're nailing or screwing into the walls it doesn't hit the pipe. You know, Lori, that's that's interesting because they must have had a lot of people nailing into the pipe, so they had to come up with something like that. Yeah, yeah so it's like problem and a solution. Exactly. Um, and here is. Um, Wait a minute! You had a curved pipe, and we have in the classroom um, these little reading machines that are made out of the same PVC pipe, and that's what Lori's showing. You see those? Yes, yeah, they, they curve it a little bit to make sure it fits. Now you see how it's kind of dripping with purple? This is actually the glue that is used to hold the two, the pipes together. So these are kind of like curved attachments. So in order to make sure that the pipes are sealed and they don't leak, they put this like purple glue and that's what it looks like to seal it shut. It's hard for us to see the purple, but we'll, we'll, we'll take a few. Oh, here, I'll zoom in. Do you see it's like purple? Yeah. You see the, you see here, I'm going to zoom in here. See purple? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like gossip. Yeah. yeah. And this is the, um, it comes in like these little uh, jars here. Does Richard do that or somebody else? No, this is the plumbers. So the plumbers, they, they were here before the, the slab was poured, and now they're coming back. Now, um, you can actually see one of the plumbers here. He's taking a lunch break, resting in the garage. <laughs> oh, resting looks like sleeping. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a lunchtime siesta. Um, there, he was on his lunch break when he came to take his lunch He's in the back by the sun. It's just his legs laying down. Yeah. Yeah. So, Stretch. Yeah. Like, where's Waldo? <laughs> okay, so this. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this picture here, this is actually going to be where the laundry machine, the washer and dryer is, okay? So I'm going to show you a couple things that they do for the washer and dryer, but one thing you'll notice is see how this pipe is curved, like right here? Yeah. Can you see that? All right, they put yeah. this on all, all, the, all the pipes, and they'll be put in later underneath the sinks and the cabinets, but what this is called is this is called a P-trap. 
And what this does is when the dirty water flows down this pipe, some of it gets stuck right here, right? Because it's all flowed by gravity. So once all the water, once you turn off the faucet, some water will be still left in this pipe. And that's, le that's done on purpose. The reason why it's done is they want to block the air from coming up through the pipes because this is the sewer, so they don't want your home smelling bad like sewer water. So when the water gets trapped here, it actually blocks the smelly air from coming into your home. So they, des they design this little loop um, called a P-trap, and this is on all the sinks and all the different plumbing sewer fixtures to make sure. So we've learned there's two different things that they do with the air in the sewer pipe. One, they have this P-trap here, which traps a little bit of water to block the smelly air from coming in your home. And then they also have the pipe going through the ceiling, through the roof, so that way the air does not get forced back down the pipe, but can actually get go up into the roof, so it doesn't block the flow of water. So they really have to think about what to do with the air and the pipes, how the air and the water interact. Here's another view of the P-trap. And um, you can see here is like the, another nail plate because they anticipate that the drywall will be screwed over in these areas. So they want to make sure it doesn't penetrate the pipes. And um, like I said, this is for the washer and dryer. So they have little valves here for, that are going to be hooked into your washing and dryer machine once they're installed. And... Um, what this is, is this is actually a pressurizer that they put on afterwards, and this is what it looks like up close. And they put this on these pipes, and they put it somewhere throughout the house. And what this does is they actually, before they're finished, they fill the pipes up with water, and they check to see where this gauge is to make sure the water is pressurized. Because if there's a leak in the pipes, they want to find out now before they go ahead and put all the drywall in. So if there's a leak, the water will slowly drip out, and this dial here will move, and you'll be able to tell whether there's a leak in the pipes. So they pressurize the pipes, they fill them up with water, and they look at this to make sure that there's no leaks before they leave, um, before the drywall's installed. So that they can fix anything now before other people come in and do their work. Now, what this is here is this is something that's put on the fresh water that's coming in to the washing machine. Now, the washing machine, as you guys know, is very powerful. It puts a, a lot of water in, and it mixes up all the clothes, and sometimes it shakes a little bit. So what they have here are little springs that the water flows through these springs. That way, as the the powerful washing machine moves, these springs relieve, alleviate some of the pressure so that way the pipes don't burst. So, all the, you know, when you turn the washing machine on, it, all that water comes and it shakes. So, those two little things stabilize it so that the pipe doesn't burst. Yeah, exactly. Now, this is another special thing they put in. This is for where the refrigerator is. So now we're in the kitchen. And they put um, this is like a little box that has like all the things needed to hook up your refrigerator. So they go ahead and install that where the refrigerator is going to be. And um, here you can see this is just going to be another sink. So you've got the fresh water, the fresh hot and cold water, and then this is the sewer. Now this is the bathtub. This is in the master bedroom master bathroom, and this bathtub actually has jacuzzi jets in it. They didn't put the tub, is the tub there, or it just has a wood over it, or is that where they're going to put it? No, the tub is actually installed, and they put a wood over to protect the tub from being damaged. Oh. So this is the, the tub, and you can see there's all these different, um, all these different pipes coming out of it, because this tub has, lot, has jets in it, so there's going to be water flowing in and out from all over. And there's a motor up to your house. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. That'd be fun. Okay. I'm sorry. We just got. I just. I just. 
Let him off track. Okay. Shh. I love that. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is the hot tub in the master bed bathroom, and there's a motor here that turns on the jets. So they go ahead and they install that. This is um, a shower. So here you can see this is where the, the valves are going to be. And they have the hot water and the cold water, and they meet here in the middle. And this is where the hot and cold water mix. So you know when you turn on your shower, you, you, you pick how much hot and cold water you want. This is where it mixes for it to come out of the shower head. You can see they put in another tub over here. And then they cover it so they up. they put the tub in before the walls. Wow. Yeah, they put the tub in first. Um, and then they cover it up to protect it. So that way other people that come in the house don't get it like nicked yeah. and scratched. See the back of the tub. Yeah. And that's it for the plumbing. And I'll show you. So... In the walls, you can see before they drywall, they put plumbing, but another thing that they also put in the walls is the air conditioning. Okay? So I'll show you a couple pictures of what they did for the air conditioning this week, too. So this here is going to be a closet, and they're going to put in this closet the air handler. Now, what the air handler is, it's a big metal box with like a fan in it. And it's what blows the air throughout your home, so it makes the air in your house cold or hot, depending whether you have the air conditioning on or the heater on. So they build this stand here because this is where it's going to go. It's not here yet. And you can see it's raised because it actually needs to suck air from underneath the fan so it can blow it out. And then I'll show you some more pictures. It connects to um, all these different returns throughout the home. And... This is done by our HVAC subs. HVAC stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Okay? Lori, that's the house that you are actually seeing, right? That, this is the actual plan that they received. So they got the floor plan. And what they do is they have a computer program. And in that computer program, they plug in the areas. They plug in the area of all the windows all the doors, and then they, they also plug in the computer all the rooms and the areas and volumes of all the rooms. And this computer program, we help them because we give them all these different schedules with information about the areas and volumes of all the rooms and the windows. They need to know information about the windows and the doors because that's where heat comes into the home. Because heat comes in, the sun shines through the window, it heats up a room. Also, the doors open and close, so air is coming in and out of the doors. So they need to know all that information, so we give them all this data, and we give them the floor plan, and they put it in a computer, and it comes out, and it tells them where they need to put all the different vents for the air conditioning. Okay? So I'm going to show you what this looks like. In person in real life. So this is the plan and then see this is where the machine the machine goes and then they have this big box. Now you'll notice all of the HVAC materials covered in like a, a tin foil. See it's like a shiny tin foil. That's so that this tin foil reflects heat. So that way all the air inside stays insulated and cool and it's um stays either cool or hot depending on what you want it to be. We also, we... So everybody at home here, Lori, so when they go home, everyone has one of, them, one of these in their closet somewhere in the house if they have um, an air conditioner. Yeah. Now, some people have it in their garage, but what we do is oh. we put all of the air handlers inside of our house because it's more energy efficient. So we have a closet oh, inside the house. So it saves energy by being in... But even though you lose a closet... It saves yeah, a lot of energy. it takes up a little bit of space, but because the fan blows so much air, some of the air leaks out of the closet. So by the air handler being in the house, the air isn't, it stays in the house. Whereas if it was in the garage, a lot of cool air would be wasted coming out into the garage. So, so, um, so the students can go home and tell their parents that they're wasting a lot of energy by having this air handler in the garage. 
Yeah, but right? it's also, that's correct. It's more energy efficient if the air handler is inside the house. We also uh -huh. seal all of the gaps with like this um, special like glue. This also makes it more energy efficient because it um, it makes it so that less air leaks out of the box. So what we do is we have this, this box that's going to connect to the air handler and from this box you see all these tubes which are going to be going to all the different rooms in the house which will be where the um, it will let the air flow into those rooms. Okay, so these tubes are covered, they've got tin foil to reflect any heat and then inside is insulation and then inside the insulation is a tube where the air stays. This is what it comes in. They unwrap these and then they expand. And then these are the vents which they connect to in the ceiling for the vents for the air to come out. So this is what it looks like. You can see in the ceiling it's coming from the box. This is one. And then this is after they're all in. It kind of looks like um, an octopus or something. But you can see it's coming out of this box in all different directions. And this is so the air can be distributed to the, all the rooms in the house. See, this is the he's the worker. He's the one who goes ahead and sets it all up. He looks at the plans and sees where everything needs to be. So you see, this is the vent. How the air comes out into the room. Now, all of your homes have a thermostat. That thermostat detects the temperature of your home. So when that thermostat tells it, well, it talks through a wire to that air handler and says the house is too hot. It's time to turn on and cool up the air, cool up the house. Or in the winter time, it'll tell it to heat up the house. So that thermostat is what um, is how the air handler knows how much air to put into the house all the time. And um, another thing is there's certain vents that the HVAC people put in. So this is in the kitchen. This is a vent for the, the microwave. Um, so if you're cooking, sometimes you'll put a vent on to get some of the smells um, or moisture off the stove. So they have a vent that goes to the roof here that they put in. And then another thing is, this is the last thing, is we also have, so all the air in your home is constantly being recycled, right? It gets blown into the rooms and then it comes back up through this box. We, and one of the things that we do in our homes to make it a little bit more clean is we have a pipe here that goes directly to the outside. So this pipe will constantly bring in fresh air into the home. So that way new clean air is being circulated along with the other air that's um, circulating the home. So the HR guy, he's not done yet. He still has some more work to do, but that's what he did this week. So we had the plumbers come in. They put the pipes through the walls um, to get ready for all the sinks and showers and faucets. And then the um, HVAC people came, and they put in um, the starting framework for your air conditioning system. And um, actually right now the electricians are there. They're putting in wires in the walls, but I'll show you guys that next week. Wow, we have some questions here, Lori. Okay, so we're going to go table by table. Ryan? Hi, I'm Ryan. Do you have to put the pipes in a certain place? Yes, very important. The plumbing pipes have to be in a certain place because when you put in the sink or a faucet or a shower head, it has to be able to connect directly to those pipes. And if they're not in the right place, sometimes the cabinets won't fit or the shower, you know, it won't fit right. So you got to make sure everything's in the right spot. So it's really important that people follow that plan. That's why you have to plan mm -hmm. to know where these are going. So that and the plans are dimensioned. They're dimensioned up to one-eighth of an inch. So they're very, very precise. One-eighth of an inch is very, very tiny. So they're dimensioned um, all the way up to an eighth of an inch to make sure that they get it just right. Um, I'm Lauren. Um, do you put a water heater in the house later? The water heater. Well, um, 
The hot water, yes, there is a water heater, and I'll show you that. Our homes actually have a tankless water heater, so it's this little box that goes on the outside of the home, and it has hot coils that the water runs over um, to heat the water in the house. So, yes, we do have a water heater that goes in um, towards the end of the house being built. How many people work on the house at one time? Uh, that's a great question. It depends. So you guys saw last week Richard, he did the metal, the metal framing and he works by himself. This week we had the plumbers and the HVAC people in. The plumbers, there might have been like two or three plumbers working and then um, you saw I think there was just like one or two people working on the HVAC. So, um, you know, depending on how many people they have at the house, depending how busy they are, you know, it could be um, for this stage of construction, like maybe five people in the house at a time. But sometimes there's more. It just depends how fast they want to get it done. So, like the tubes in the ceiling, like bed. What was that? I'm kind of Do the tubes in the ceiling like bend? Do the tubes in the ceiling bend? That's a great question. Um, the plumbing pipes that go through the ceiling, those actually, they go through the roof, and on the roof, they get a, a little metal boot to protect them, and those just stick straight up. So if it rains, rainwater will actually go down those pipes and into the sewer. Now, the vents for the HVAC, like the vent in the kitchen for your microwave, those, you don't want water to get into them. So those go through the roof, they get a little metal cap, and the metal cap is bent, so that way water can't get inside of it. Hi, I'm Eloisa. Where do they get all the energy to do all these things? I mean, like, the... The stuff, like how they're powered, like where oh. do they get the energy? Oh. So where the I'm not sure I understand where do they get the energy for like the air conditioning to run or the energy to work all day? And um, oh, no. I think she wants the energy to run. Where is the, where are you getting the energy to run the air conditioner? Or to run, okay. right? The water? The water, actually the water is all run by pressure. So the water is held, you know, the, the water actually, when you turn the, the, the faucet, the water comes out and it's constantly pressurized so that way you have a nice flow of water. The, um, the air conditioning system is actually, it's run electrically and there's um, wires that connect the air handler, which turns the fan to power all the air through the house, and the thermostat, and those are electrically connected through wires, and they talk to each other. And then on the outside of the home, there's an electric meter and an electric box which powers electricity to the house. And that's connected to a larger system that runs all the way down your street um, and gives electricity to the whole community. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right, go ahead, Skylar. My name's Skylar. What is your favorite thing about building a house? My favorite thing about building a house is um, it's really neat to see the house on paper, on the plans, and in your head you kind of imagine it one way, but then see it actually come to life, and then to have people live in the house is really cool. So I like the whole process from seeing it from start on a piece of paper to finish with the actual home being built. Like, is everyone raising their hand or everyone here is going to have a question? You can ask another one. You need to raise your hand like yes. How many bathrooms are in the house? That particular home has, let me check for you. That home has three bathrooms. So it has four bedrooms and three bathrooms. Oh, nice. How much longer do you think it will take until the house is completely done? Nice, good question. That's a great question. It takes about five months for the home to be started until it's completed. And I would say we're right in the middle. 
So I would say a couple more months until it's 100% finished. Will we see it by the end of the year? Because we finish in June. Um, it should be really close. Oh, very close. Yeah. Is the house really big? Is the house really big? Um, yeah, this is actually one of our larger homes. It is over 2,000 square feet. So maybe what you guys can do is you can calculate the square footage of your room. Mom, do you know the dimensions of the room you're in right now? No, but I guess what they can do is if it's over 2,000 square feet, they could go home and ask their family how big their apartment is or their house, and then they can see if it's bigger or smaller. Right. That's a great idea. Yeah, so it's, it's um, to be exact, it's 2,120 conditioned square feet. So all the area that's air conditioned is that. And then if you include the garage and the front and back porch, it's 2,760 square feet. Okay, so it's 2,000 square feet, but not including the garage. That's air conditioned space. Yeah. 2,000 square feet of air conditioner touches. Yep. Oh, I Same before, Blake. Like, my name is Blake, and how many people work on putting the pipes up? Oh, on the ceiling, right? Yeah. How many people worked on putting the pipes? Is, is that the question? Uh, yeah. yeah, is it? Especially in the ceiling. Yeah, I would say there's like two or three people working on the pipes, putting it together. Okay. My name is Dana. How many pipes are needed for the whole house? Oh. Oh, that's a great question. I actually, I don't know the answer to that question. I'll have to find out. I'm not sure how many pipes are used. But, um. Stump Lori. Yeah, you stump me. But you, if you look on the plants, um, they have dimensions to where all the pipes need to be. So you can see here, they, you, they have a dimension. So I guess you could calculate. That's something probably the plumber, when they're deciding how much money they want to charge for the job, they probably look at these plants and see how big the house is, how many bathrooms, they probably figure out how many pipes they need, and that's probably one of the ways they figure out how much money they want to charge for them to work on that job. Hi, I'm Ryan. How much rooms are in the house and all? This house has four bedrooms plus a bonus room. So um, four bedrooms, a bonus room, and then there's um, a living room area and a kitchen and dining room. Wait a second. Oh, God. Okay. Lori, so next week is going to be, what's our lesson next week? Well, next week you're definitely going to see all the electrical wires that go throughout the house. You can see how they um, connect to all the different switches and light fixtures and everything that you use, um, all the outlets. They put all that in, the walls, all the wires for that. So we'll take a look at that. At that. And then... Um, Maybe some other stuff we'll see, but definitely the electrical wires in the walls. Um, you know, um, I know they really like seeing Richard. Is, would there be anybody else that you think would be really interesting for Lori maybe to ask a question to? Who would you want to see in the building of the process? Blake? The, pie, the plumbers? You'd like to get Lori to maybe ask a plumber or take a picture or something? Yes. Oh, Skylar? Oh, Lori's boyfriend. Lori's boyfriend has an exact title. What is his position in this whole um, process? He's the president. He's the, you want to see the president? <laughs> okay. Those of you who know that, kind of see. No, it's not for us. <laughs> okay, um, Catherine. Oh, the, it's not the pipe maker. The the, the plumber. The plumber in, interests you. Yes. Shh. Would you like to see the people who bought the house? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sure Lori will be able to arrange that. Oh. Okay. Any.
any other questions? Wait a minute. Ms. Shilson? Yes? I have a cast of children for our dismissal. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Lori, we're going to uh, give one more question. Okay. We're going to go ahead and uh, say goodbye, and we'll see you next week. Bye, Lori. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend.